So, in James and in 2 Corinthians, we see two men looking into the Word as if the Word is a mirror. And the Word is depicted as a mirror because he sees something in it that reflects the reality of what he is. In one sense, I think negatively, and in another sense, I think positively, depending on his focus. And in James, we see the man who <clears throat> is looking into the mirror of the word and seeing his natural face, to use James' word. And his intention is to go to the word, looking to be blessed for keeping and doing the word. He's looking for, I guess, temporal blessing uh, or even salvation, but he's looking for results and he's looking at himself. And when he comes to the word, he sees himself in it and that law that he sees, because <clears throat> the law is to get you to do in order to see results. It's a wage system. It's an exchange system. It's, I give you this, and therefore you give me that, right? So this person is looking into the law and beholding his natural face. And if he doesn't do the word when he walks away from it, it's like he's forgotten what manner of man he is. And the point of the law should be to show you what you really are in your natural man. And if you're the kind of person who continues to go on hearing the word and not doing it, and that doesn't produce some kind of crisis for you, then you are deceived. You are what he calls a forgetful hearer, meaning you looked in that mirror and you didn't let it really penetrate you as to as far as what you saw. That If you're looking at the law and you're looking at yourself, you should eventually come to the conclusion that you are doomed. <laughs> And that's really what Paul says in Romans 3, you know, that he says, do we, uh, we establish the law. And the, what he means is we establish it by agreeing with its conclusion. And that conclusion eventually puts us on the cross with Christ. We agree with God and his condemnation of the natural man. The person tethered to Sinai, looking at his natural man in the, in the, in the, uh, mirror you know and james looks like a nice guy he's a natural man though he's looking at his natural man and he is a son of bondage he's born into bondage and his mother was a slave and she, he was produced this kind of person is produced as the result of trying to help god fulfill what only god can do because Abraham went into Sarah, uh, and that didn't work out because she was barren. And so he went into Hagar and produced Ishmael. And Ishmael represents this kind of person who is um, seeking to accomplish what God has to do supernaturally in the time of life. And this kind of person is born into the world as a wild ass of a man. And he is, uh, his hand is against every person because he's fighting for legitimacy because of the effort that was required to produce him. He believes that he deserves to stand and he d believes that his righteousness, supposed righteousness, should be rewarded with the inheritance. And he believes that um, he's the legitimate one and that he's really the firstborn, he was there first, and he should get the inheritance. And he's furious at Isaac. He's furious at the sons of promise who, uh, by no travail, become the heirs simply by being born in the time of life and late. You know, they were born late. And there's no reason why they should be heirs because there's nothing to merit an inheritance there, but it's by life and it's by promise. And he can't understand this and it infuriates him. So he persecutes these grace people who simply believe in God's promise. And he gets, uh, he's angry and can't relate to them. And he is at enmity with them and he pursues them 
and he so that becomes his fascination his fascination see he was sent out he he's been rejected and he is not close to the source of blessing and he's not close to god and he's not you know dwelling with abraham at peace and his descendants he's out in the wilderness and he's got a growing anger and all he can think about is is the inheritance that should be his but isn't and he can't quite figure out why and it makes him so angry and so this is why he you know he's obsessed with his supposed legitimacy and his which is manifested today as self-righteousness and he wants to just persecute you know and because because of this his hand he can't get along with anybody and his hand is against every man and he is biting and devouring so this is what we see and then not only that but he is his as far as his relationship with god is concerned god he cannot draw close to god he is far from god because god to him is this terrifying terrible fearsome dark cloud of woe at the top of a mountain which he's not even allowed to approach if he were to approach it he'd be put to death because this god is a consuming fire and he can't tolerate god's voice which comes to him as a trumpet from that cloud getting louder and louder and issuing the decree of the law so that he sees god as this intolerable consuming fire that is inapproachable and he's in fear and trembling when he thinks of god so he's standing there at the base of this mountain as far as god is concerned in his sins with no solution and nothing but a sentence of death from this terrible uh mighty god and that's his perception of god and you know he can't relate to god and he can't draw near to god and there's definitely no intimacy there so there's uh there is then a kind of striving because now since god is that far removed from him because he only sees god through the law because he's veiled he can't see the face of jesus christ he only sees the the commandments written on the tablets of stone you know and which are a death sentence to him and it comes from this terrifying booming trumpet voice that he can't tolerate to hear it causes him to fear and quake he uh he tries to strive you know uh all he whenever he thinks of god it causes him to strive and that striving is and based on an ignorance of the principle of sin that's in him he doesn't understand the law of sin he doesn't understand how ruined he is he listens to that commandment and thinks well i gotta do it because otherwise there's just condemnation for me and he's under this cloud of condemnation and he's in this fear and he's trying in himself to fulfill the law and discovering that every time he tries to fulfill it he fails and he can't figure out why because he's blind he's blind to the principle of sin that's ruling his members and taking him captive to do its will so that when he would do good he the evil is present with him he can't discover that law because he's blind and so what this eventually produces in him is the carnal mind that is at enmity with god he's hostile towards god he hates God because everything that God represents, he'll never admit it. But his in his flesh, he cannot please God and he knows he can't please God. He knows he's rejected and yet he still has to fight for his supposed legitimacy because without it, what does he have? And he thinks he should be the heir, but he knows he's not. And he can't figure out why and he's striving in his self-righteousness and he becomes capable of anything. And this is kind of like what Saul was before he became Paul, breathing threat threats against the Christians, so enraged. And he found out that his rage was actually directed at God himself. He'd become an enmity, an enemy of God. The carnally minded man is at enmity with God because it cannot be subject to God's law. And so this kind of person, of course, can't please God. He's hostile to everyone and especially hostile to God. And if he stays there, will go into outer darkness 
with the gnashing of teeth, which is this hatred, this seething. The, the gnashing of teeth is a hatred. It's a hissing. It's a rage-filled gnashing. There's tears and, and weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's sorrow in that place, but there's also rage, irrevocable rage towards God by a fully formed carnal mind that is hostile to him. And then, you know, he is, his, as far as his ministry is concerned, when he thinks he's serving God, when, because he's a natural man and he looks in the mirror, he sees all this terror. And yet when he walks away from it, he's not a doer of it, never produces the right crisis. So he forgets what kind of person he is and he goes about his business, even though all of this is operating in the background. And now he thinks he, because he thinks he's legitimate, because he thinks he's a Christian, he thinks he should minister. And now this ministry comes out as a ministry of condemnation and death. Why? Because he, he ministers according to the letter. It's got no revelation of Christ in it. All he can give you is the tablets of stone, right? And he is ministering, and sometimes quite seemingly very gloriously, right? These people seem to have a glory to them, but it's the fading glory. The reason why Moses had to cover his face when he came down from the mountain, according to Paul, it was a type of because the glory that was shining on his face was a fading glory. And the veil covered the end of it. So you didn't know when the glory went out. And that's what these people are. They can boom and, and bluster, but there's no, there's no remaining glory. It only is death. And if you receive their ministry, you will have the life sucked out of you. And you cannot listen to these people. And, uh, they're ministering according to the letter that kills. This letter was written on the graven stone. It has nothing to do with them. So they minister in a way that's totally impersonal and doesn't touch them at all. And so therefore it's hypocrisy because they're trying to hold everybody to a standard that they can't keep themselves. It has nothing to do with them and is a sentence of death to them. And yet they're so blind, they don't see it. Whenever they read the scripture, they're blind and they don't see Christ. And when they minister, it has nothing to do with Christ and it has nothing to do with them. Yet it has a glory, but it's a fading glory. And that glory will sap your strength in your life. So that's the warning that I see in the four views of these two mountains regarding the natural man who is veiled and comes to the Bible as a law book looking for something to do so that he can be blessed. We have to get out of that line. That is the line of Cain. We have to get make a transfer to be unveiled to behold Christ so that we can be children of Zion.